All right, so here we are today with TRS, the Recycled Studio in San Jose, Costa Rica. And we're gonna teach you how to make the perfect recycled sheet. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna dive deep into how to make a perfect sheet using the sheet press. When we released the sheet press, we had a couple of months to do tests, but of course, this is a lifelong undertaking. And we didn't have enough time to really look deeply into how to make a perfect sheet from plastic waste. But fast forward three years, in 2023, we have dozens of people all around the world experimenting with the sheet press to really figure out how to make the best sheets out of recycled plastic. And we really see this as a big potential. Instead of having a, like a small team in the Netherlands developing technology, we have a whole team distributed across the planet that is experimenting and pushing R&D on the sheet press and all the other precious plastic machines. And today I'm here in Costa Rica to meet TRS. And let me tell you, this guy makes the best recycled sheets that I have seen so far. So what a better opportunity to actually learn from them, the masters of the sheets. Okay, so we're gonna start off by understanding what makes a good sheet. Then we're gonna look into plastic and what makes a good plastic. So third, we're gonna learn how to prepare the mold. Fourth, we're gonna learn about the machine hacks that they've done in order to achieve the best possible sheets. Fifth, we're gonna look in the actual process. And sixth, we're gonna to touch briefly on finishing and post-production processes. And now, without any further ado, I'm gonna give you the TRS guys. So the first step to understanding how to make a perfect sheet is knowing what to look for. We have four points that we always check. Thickness, also known as tolerance, surface quality, bubbles, and corners. Thickness. Um, this can be quite a challenging issue and it's something that we look for really meticulously when assessing our sheet materials. So ideally you have less than a millimetre difference across the whole thickness and also there's the question of the centre of the lamina um, sometimes being thinner for different reasons that we'll talk about later. Essentially you want a uniform thickness, also known in the industry, as tolerance. The next question is surface. So what does your surface look like? There's a very, there's an array of issues that can happen with the surface. You can see flakes, you can see blistering, uh, sometimes you've got ripples, and sometimes you can see very small surface bubbles. Uh, ideally you have a uniform uh, surface which should look something like this. Then we move on to bubbles. Um, and this is not so much surface bubbles, but side bubbles. Um, an issue that can often happen is that when you cut the laminate, you see that there's lots of little different bubbles. There's a couple reasons why this happens, but ideally it would be completely solid and uniform, like this. And then, finally, um, an issue we've all had, and sometimes we even still get it, is the question of the corners. How can you make sure that your laminates have perfect cor corners on all four? Ideally, a laminate would look like this, but in the meter by meter squared. So the first step, which is like step zero, is analyzing and validating your plastic source. Quality control is essential. What do we do in-house? Firstly, we've got a great provider who understands our needs and works closely with us and understands the, the requirements that we have for our plastic. Secondly, we do tests. So we have a small machine where we do the first couple tries to validate if this is something that we can take forward and we can work with. It's great for a couple reasons. One, we, we don't have to turn on the big machine and do the whole process. Two, we don't have to use loads of plastic. And three, because it's a smaller lamina, it happens way quicker and we can move a lot quicker with, with um, that process. So once we do a couple tests on the small machine, we'll do a test on the big machine to really kind of finally validate uh, if the plastic works for us. One of the important things that we analyze when we're doing this process is the melting point of the plastic. So that gives us the information, what is the ideal temperature to transform at. This information goes a long way to solving many of the problems that we have mentioned. 
Only once we have um, passed quality control of the small machine and successfully thrown out a large sheet do we then accept the plastic source um, as part of our inventory in the workshop. Knowing that our plastics are clean, properly divided and in the right colours is fundamental. We make sure that all of this is inventorised and separated and we have these small little boxes that we're able to a, use for ourselves but also use for our customers so they can see what we have in the workshop. In conclusion, one of the most, if not the most, essential step to having a perfect sheet is to analyse and validate your plastic source. Once you have validated your plastic source, it's on to making the sheet itself. One of the first steps you need to do is weigh out the plastic. You need to know the density of the plastic that you're working with. As a rough average, we go for about one gram per cubic centimetre. So for this sheet that we're going to be making today, it's Dalmata in three quarters. We're going to use about 19.2 kilos of hips. Once you have weighed your plastic, it's time to get the moulds ready. And so we use this bottom sheet, which we put a mold release, a silicone based mold release on the bottom. Uh, and then we pour in the plastic to try and make sure that it is evenly distributed amongst all of the sheet and taking special care on the corners to make sure that we haven't got any um, holes on the corners that could affect how much of the sheet is actually usable. So we built the sheet press um, with the designs in about 2019, 2020. And from then we've done a few adap adaptations to our machines to make sure that we're trying to get those perfect sheets. So one of the adaptations that we did, as well as tropicalizing pretty much the whole machine and including the electric circuits, was we put these railings in. The idea was that we were going to make sure that when we pressed the sheets together, that there was going to be evenness. So um, it didn't have too much pressure on one side, meaning that there, was going to be, uh, there wasn't going to be a good tolerance in the sheet that we produced. Another thing that we found particularly useful was to um, invest in a bigger plate, a thicker plate. What that does is it avoids the, the dip that sometimes you can get in the middle of your sheet, which is to do with the way that the metal is expanding once it's been heated. Uh, so for this, what we did is we uh, spoke to our CNC friends who work with our plastics and they uh, carved out the spaces for the resistances in this. So there are a couple of things that you can do once your sheet is in the machine to ensure that you're getting the best sheet possible. Uh, one of them to do is to do with temperature and the other one is to do with pressure. The temperature is really going to depend on the type of plastic that you're using and the thickness of your sheet. But um, we normally use about 180 degrees for hips and slightly lower for HDPE. With the pressure, obviously it's very difficult to get to the full pressure when the plastic is still melting. But uh, what we do, or what we found tends to work and it has helped us with avoiding the bubbles is by pumping up every 10 minutes until we get to, can't do it any further, and that is it. In terms of time, that obviously depends on your thickness, but what we do is we start the timing as soon as the, the sheet is in the machine and we end it once it's over. So for the three quarter sheet that we're doing today in hips, we have put the timer on for 72 minutes and we're gonna be pumping up every 10 minutes until I can't pump up any further. So here at TRS, we have two cooling presses. Um, and once the sheet has uh, finished its heating cycle, we move it into the cooling press. The idea being to make sure that that pressure is back as quickly as possible. We've calculated that it roughly takes about twice as long to cool as it does to heat. So for this sheet, the three quarter in diameter, we're gonna be waiting for about two and a half hours, three hours for it to cool down. We have two cooling presses here because we found that when we were stacking the plastic, the sheets on top of one another in one cooling press, it was a recipe for surface deformation. We did it a couple of times and we realized that the release of the pressure once you're working with those sheets doesn't create good quality sheets. So this is one of our best recommendations for the precious plastic community. If you cool one sheet at a time and you make sure that it's nice and cool before you take it out, you're gonna get a good quality sheet. So once your sheet is cooled, it's on to the post-production process. Now, if your molds are good quality and they haven't got any scratches on, this should be a really simple process where all you're doing is really trying to get rid of the silicone um, in order to make sure it's got a nice and even surface. 
If, for any reason, your moulds have got a scratch on or two, you might want to make sure that that isn't on your plastic. And so what you can do is you can pass by with a um, sandpaper um, to make sure you've got a nice and even surface. The type of sandpaper you're going to use is going to really depend on the type of plastic you're after and you're using and the finish that you're after. So this is the moment, hopefully, where you can check the materials and see that all that you've done in the previous steps has paid off. Now, in order to check that you haven't got any bubbles, you are going to need to cut into the material, which is nice always to get a, a nice finish with a router. Here we can see that um, we have very few bubbles in there, so we're very happy with the surface. The corners are all good, and the surface is nice and flat. All right, so that's how you make a perfect recycle sheet. And these guys are the master of it. I mean, I've been traveling a lot around the world, and really some of the biggest complaints from people like yourself making sheets around the planet is we get a lot of bubbles, we get a lot of flakes, the surface is uneven, we can't keep the thickness. And these guys have really nailed it. You don't see any bubbles in these sheets. It's all perfectly even thickness, there's no flakes. Really, I'm not sure how to improve these sheets. I really hope that you guys got as much knowledge as possible from this video. Probably not gonna come out as nice the first time that they make it, I think. You know, as everything, it takes experiments, obsession. So, and really what it takes is the determination. You're gonna fail one time, two times, 10 times, what matters is that you learn each time from your failures. All right, I really can't thank the guys at TRS enough. They are incredible, they are awesome, their sheets are phenomenal, and I really hope that many more of you can get to these sheets very, very soon. Until next time, ciao! Thank you, guys.